Our next speaker is Anson Thomas. He was born in Mumbai, but originally from God's own country. Anson played hockey professionally and represented Bombay and Indian customs for several years. He gave up his service in customs and started to rescue women and children from Mumbai's red light district. So far, he has rescued over 800 women and children. Let's all put our hands and welcome our dear brother, Anson. Praise the Lord. As a small schoolboy, I didn't have football shoes. I played bare feet. And that was the time when there was leather studs with nails. I used to get stirred. I got into the school team and I got the football kit, jersey, shorts, stocking, shoes. But when my mother saw that, she returned it to the principal saying, my son is only for studies. With, with great difficulty, I put 10 paise, 20 paise at that time and I got a hockey stick for 55 rupees. And I purchased a brand new hockey stick early in the morning. I was going for my hockey practice. My father asked me, where are you going? I said, Papa, I'm going for my hockey practice. My father took my hockey stick and broke it and said, Irindu Padike, sit and study. My parents could not stop my sports. I salute them because the Bible says, end your discipline. Dear friends, I got a job in Bombay Customs. I didn't have any godfather, but God was my father. I was introduced right now that a custom officer, a sportsman in the red light area, at the back of the mind you may be thinking, hey, what is this? This guy, something wrong with him. How come reaching and landing into the red light areas to do rescue and rehabilitation? It was 2nd October 1991. I had gone for a church picnic to Lonavla. 2nd October is Gandhi Jayanti and it's a dry day. You don't get any drinks. But after reaching there, I managed to get a few bottles of beer and I sat and rang with my friends. My church pastor, Reverend Kurian George, he came to know that I had drinks. In front of everyone, he confronted me and told me, Anson, you have broken the fellowship for what you have come here for and I am going to tell your father. I felt very insulted. You know why? Because all Malayalis were there. They get little, they make it so big. Not only that, 28 years back, I was like a Ben Johnson training. And this pastor telling me, I will tell your father. I told him, go tell my father, I'm not scared of you. And the whole day, I didn't speak to him. Coming back from Lonavla, I thought to myself, there were many times I used to drink. Not that I'm an alcoholic, a social drinker, but today, having a little beer, this is my weakness, I'll give it up. That day night, I went home, caught my dad's hand, and I told my daddy, Daddy, I used to drink today, too, I had drinks. I make a promise to you, never in my life I'll drink. The promise which I made was, not only to my dad, it was to God. Because I can fool my dad, I can fool everyone, but not God. The next day, I went to the house where this pastor was staying, and I told him I made a promise, I'll not drink. You know what he told me? Anson, do you know why I confronted you? It is the love, it is the concern I have for you. That love, that concern changed my life in a very small way. Then one day in my room, I knelt down and I opened out all my small sins, all my big sins, all my dark sins, where my parents did not know, my brothers or sister or my close friend did not know. But then I said, Jesus, you died on the cross to forgive me all my sins. As you rewind a video or a tape, I rewound all my sins, my past sins. And the blood of Jesus washed away all my sins. And I got the real peace, real happiness, real joy. And that was the most beautiful day in my life when I had the born again experience. From that day on, I started carrying my Bible with me wherever I go. In my office in customs, in my playground where I used to go to play hockey, I used to open my Bible and read. And my friends, my colleagues used to laugh at me, hey, look at this padri. But then I didn't bother. It was the Holy Spirit who led me. 
And one day, the same pastor asked me to go to a hospital in Bombay, Cyan Hospital, to meet an alcoholic who also happened to be from a Christian home. I went there. I didn't know how to pray. I did not know to preach. Then I shared my testimony. That was a psychiatric ward. They were alcoholic, drug addicts, people who were HIV positive. Started going from one ward to the other ward, from one hospital to the other hospital. At that time, I was a bachelor. Late in the evening, I started going in the crowded trains distributing gospels and tracts. Got down at Viti Station and walk up all the way to Kolaba where the Taj Hotel is. Walking over there, I came across these customers, these clients who were trying to find out which lady, which woman is beautiful. I used to go and tell them a slogan in Hindi, Do minute ka maja, zindagi bar ka saja, eight se iski waja. They used to get startled. I used to tell them, here you're paying money, there is fear, there is guilt, there is a disease of AIDS, how can you enjoy sex? But with your wife, you don't have to pay money, there is no fear, there is no guilt, and that's how you can enjoy sex to the climax. Here you may be thinking no one is watching you, your parents or your wife is not watching you, but then there is someone who watches and that is God. You can hide from everyone but not from God. And I started seeing these customers go away. Slowly got the courage to talk to these ladies, these women, the street walkers. They used to tell me, Do lakh rupiah denge kya? Paanch lakh rupiah denge kya? Fir am danda chhod denge. I didn't know what to tell them. I told them, look at the blind people. They do their work and they earn their living. God has given you a beautiful body, hands, legs. Mine, you can work and you can earn your living. But then that was my defense. I didn't have anything to offer to them. And it was during that period, 91, 92, it used to come in the newspapers about HIV AIDS and the red light area called Kamatipura. One day, late in the night, I found out where this place Kamatipura was. And I went there all alone. Walked for one hour up and down the lanes. There were pimps calling me, girls calling me. And I could really feel the power of darkness over there. And I got so scared. As I was a 25-year-old young boy, I went back to the bus stop. And at the bus stop, to go back home, I said, God, why did you bring me here? All of a sudden, I got the spiritual strength. Went back, right from the pimps to the girls to the policemen, I started distributing gospels and tracts. Then on, I started going there regularly. Pimps used to come to me, sir, we'll show you young girls, beautiful girls, as I am dark girls from the south. I used to tell them, will you show me your sister? The hands used to come up to punch me and hit me. I told them when I said about your sister, you feel very bad. These girls, they have got the parents, their brothers, think what they may be thinking. Now God has given me a talent in sports. I should have played for India, but because of politics, I didn't get into the Indian team. But I believe when one door is closed, God opens 10 other doors. And the door which God opened was to go with my Bible in one hand and a football in the other hand and to go and play with the children in the dirty lanes of Kamatipura. The ball used to fall in the dirty gutters. Pick it up, wash it and play with those children. So those people started wondering, hey, who is this guy showing love and concern for the children? At the same time, I went back to my church. And I challenged the people of the church that just sitting in the four walls of the church and praying, God will not hear your prayers. There are those children, there are those sisters. What is your duty? And it was through the working of the Holy Spirit, the church said we will rehabilitate the children from the red light area. Those children who would have become pimps and prostitutes, today they have done their MBA, BSc nursing, general nursing, diploma in engineering, graduate, postgraduate. Many of the children are married and settled and they are citizens of our country. Going there, it was not again doing social work. It was a mission. It was not just I going alone over there. I started taking high-profile cricketers over there. Even to get a photograph and an autograph, it's difficult. People like Steve Woff, Adam Gilchrist, Nikki Boye, Joel Garner, Ian Bishop, Murli Karthik, Harbhajan Singh, Ebi Kurula, Tinu Yohanan. Such type of cricketers and actors like Sunil Shetty going and shaking hands with the children. Steve Wobb asking, hey son, what would you like to become? This child innocently says, uncle, I want to become a doctor. This child doesn't become a doctor, but he does his masters in social work. Praise God. And going there, my eyes were open. I could see young girls inside the brothels who, cannot, who could not come out. 
I started going in as a customer and finding out where these girls were. One day, I went into one of the brothels. They showed me a few girls. I selected one of the girls. I paid the money. She took me into a room. She shut the door, and she was about to undress herself. I said, wait, I'm not come for this. I've come to pray with you. She said, you're gone mad? Get out from this place. This place is not for people like you. I didn't know what to tell her. I had my Bible in my plastic cover. I opened my Bible, and what I got was Mark chapter 3, verses 33 to 35. Jesus sitting with his disciples, and one of the disciples says, Jesus, your mother and brother has come. I told her, those who do the will of God is my mother, brother, and sister. I told her, sister, let us pray. She got a towel and put it on her head, and we prayed. After the prayer was over, I asked the sister, what is your name? She said, my name is Mary Joseph. There are thousands of Mary Josephs in Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, and all over the world. And what is my duty just to sit and pray? I used to go to play my hockey games in Delhi, Calcutta, and all those places. And soon after my game was over, I used to throw my kid back and go to GB Road in Delhi, Calcutta, Sonagachi. And that's how I started going out over there. Because the Bible says, you are the light of the world. This light has to go into darkness. And it's only when I go into darkness, darkness will go away when the light goes out over there. But the question is, am I willing to burn? You are the light of the world, not just the light of India. 1996, I had the opportunity to go to Atlanta for the Olympic conference. On my way over there, I went to San Francisco. And as I was doing this training over there, I came to know there's going to be a gay parade. I wanted to see a gay parade. Saturday, I went to a Christian literature shop, and I got a sunshade, a car sunshade. And I wrote in big bold letters, Jesus is Lord. And on the other side, Romans chapter 1, verses 23 to 28. Sunday morning, I wore my shirt and a munda, a skirt. And I went over there from morning, 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, I stood over there holding this. Initially, people, when they saw this, they were very happy, someone supporting them. But when they came close and started reading, wherefore, God gave them up to lust. Because men exchange relation with men and women with women, and God gave them up to wild affliction. They started giving me their choices, abuse. They started showing me their hands. Hey, do you have a green card? But then I just kept my mouth shut. And I knew it was God's word which was speaking over there. And that's when I realized why God made me the goalkeeper of the Indian customs team, not just to save goals, but to save souls. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dear friends, I have rescued over 800 girls. All these are numbers. But each and every girl, she has got a story of her own. A young girl from Tamil Nadu, she was standing at the bus stop. She goes, she was standing at the bus stop. An elderly couple comes and gives her something to eat and bring. And finally, she was drugged and trafficked and sold to the eunuchs in Bombay. When the girl is young, as young as nine, the customers pay more money, started touching her and fondling her. And this girl bit this fellow and ran off. They complained to the eunuchs. They caught her, tied her hands and legs. And finally, this guy raped her four times. She was shouting, help, help. But who is there to help her? They got old clothes and shoved into her mouth. And finally, a nine-year-old child became a prostitute till she was 12-year-old, and I could rescue her. I myself had to risk my life and go and rescue this girl. Dear friends, it's not just the poor people who go there to do work and earn money. There is a girl who had done a nursing from Kerala, who was taken to a five-story building, 85 rooms, thinking that was a hospital, but all 85-room brothel. Finally, I could rescue her. I'm not trying to tell you some emotional stories, but finally, even after rescuing this girl, this girl she had HIV hepatitis. And none of the big organizations, so-called organizations working for trafficking, was willing to take her or uh, rehabilitate her. I took care of her. A couple of years back, she passed away. There are thousands of girls over there. 2009, I received the CNN award from Mukesh Ambani, Amir Khan, and all those people. 
When I received this award, I made a statement. My vision, my mission is to see the whole red light area into a green light area. All high profile people, they started clapping their hands. But at the back of the mind, they must have thought, what a pot and what a foolish fellow. Want to change the red light area into a green light area. But then, dear friends, I mean business. 2010, I gave my resignation from customs. It's very easy to stand on the pulpit and preach, to give sermons or to give a political statement. But then, what I had was my secure job in customs. I gave my resignation. My family, my relations were saying, Oh, like, you know, you're married, you have got two daughters, you have to be responsible to your family. Yes, I am responsible to my family. I went to my Ammachi, my grandmother, my mommy's mummy, and I told her, Ammachi, I've given my resignation. She didn't say, Ayyo, why you did, and all those things. She said, Mone, all these things that you see is rubbish. But if you can win one soul, it is like winning a kingdom. <laughs> then my Ammachi told me, Mone, kalpeke kaivachu tirichu nokandavan deva rajatin yogi nalla. If you keep your hand to the plow and you look back, you turn back, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. And my Ammachi is a person who challenged me. You have to press on the goal. There will be challenges. There will be problems. But then you have to continue. Dear friends, it's not just in Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, all over the world. We talk about fasting and praying. Not just inside the four walls of the church. When I go to New York over there, there is this place called Greenwich Village. I do fasting and prayer walk. Seven times around those sex tool shops, there's not much time today. Six shops over there are closed. Sex tool shops over there. Are we willing to go out into the deep? Are we willing to take challenges? There is risk. There is challenges. But then God is with us. I was there in a taxi in Kamatipura because now I cannot go out openly over there. I had sent a friend of mine to check if there are any minor girls. The pimps and the brothel keepers spotted me and they said, Thomas, they know me as Thomas. And they started running after my taxi with iron sticks and rod. I'm telling the taxi driver, Bagao, Bagao, Gadi Bagao, you know the traffic in Bombay. I could get stuck. I removed a 50 rupee and I threw it, and I jumped out of the running taxi. I look back, I can see those people running after me with iron rods and sticks. And I took my cell phone and I called my friend, and I said, hey, my life is in threat, call the police. Then I do not know I am in a different place. It's not just in the Bible. Philip baptizes the eunuch, and the Holy Spirit takes him to a different place. The Bible is alive even today. God took me through His Holy Spirit in a different place. From there, I took a taxi and I went back to the police station. My friend is there. The duty officer offers me his, a, a seat, says, ah, what will you have, tea, coffee? My friend tells me the same duty officer when he went and told him, Anson's life is in threat. Who Anson? We do not know him. That social worker who comes to rescue, we do not know him. But then when I went over there, he offers me a seat. He asked me for tea, coffee. The police people there told the brothel keepers, if you find this fellow, finish him off. Because their bribe, their pockets were affected. But dear friends, the Bible says, this God is my God forever and ever. And he will guide you even unto death. If I have to die, it's only when he calls me. And the Bible also says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And if God be with me, who can be against me? And it is because of the corrupt system which is happening. The question is, are we willing to stand up and fight? I've got even police officers arrested because of whatever they have done. So dear friends, I'm not asking you to go to the red light area. There are challenges. It's difficult. But then the Bible is very clear. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage must be respected by all and marriage bed kept undefiled. For God will punish the immoral and the adulterous. 
I have come across so many Christians visiting those places, living immoral life. One way to solve this problem is the institution of marriage which God has ordained. If we can live that life in faithfulness, praise God. This is the starting of solving the problem to see the red light area into a green light area. Thank you very much and God bless you. Wow. Brother, thank you very much, brother. God bless you. Very, very inspiring. And I want to tell you that you don't need to only go to a certain area to rescue people. Even in the corporate world, there are so many people who are tied, so many affairs, so much of immorality that is there, so much of lack of satisfaction. And you can be the same voice like <clears throat> what my brother was doing there. I want to uh, invite uh, Prince and Jeru to come and felicitate our brother. Thank you. And uh, Thank the you. memento says, Emancipator, Emancipator. Let's all put our hands and uh, bless our brother. Thank you very much. Thank you.